A guy definitely making the roster is Capo Caco getting a goal in the preseason home opener against the Islanders Tuesday. Uh, how much of this Rangers success this year depends on him taking a step forward offensively? Well, you could say that for all three of the young forwards that we talk about all the time, Caco, Lafreniere, and Hedl. Caco to me is a really interesting piece because it looks like they're going to play Lafreniere on that top line. I thought going into the season, especially when you look at some of the analytics from last year, the line that graded out in a lot of categories as the Rangers' best line last season was when Kako was playing right wing alongside Kreider and Zabanajad. I thought that might be his role going into the season, but it looks like Laviolette sees it differently. And the thing that I'm noticing more and more with Kako is they're starting to give him a lot more responsibility in defensive situations. That's an area where... His rookie season, he really struggled. But the last two seasons, he's graded out as one of the Rangers' better defensive forwards. And and Laviolette has said, I asked him this question last week, about building whatever you want to call it, a checking line, a matchup line, a defensive-oriented line. Laviolette wants to do that. He's certainly going to use that fourth line if it's Gaudreau, Benino, and Pitlick in that way. But I also think he wants that quote-unquote third line to be able to play that role as well. You've seen Vincent Trocek playing there quite a bit, and I think they're really going to value him taking important defensive zone faceoffs because he was over 56% last year, by far the best on the team. And who are you going to surround him with? Well, they've had Kako in that spot a handful of times so far in this preseason. So Kako might be playing a little bit of a different role than what we envisioned when he was drafted number two overall in 2019. But with all that being said, the reason he was drafted where he was drafted is because of the offensive upside. And Laviolette was raving the other day about Kako's unique ability to hold the puck down low in difficult situations where you're being swarmed by defenders, where where people are doing everything they can to make you turn over that puck. And he's able to do that, weave through traffic. He's, He's big and strong. People don't give him enough credit for that. And then make some creative plays, make some good passes out of those situations. Today, actually... And the power play work, he was being used in the net front role, which I don't recall seeing him used in the past. And they had him working behind the net a lot. Again, they see him as a guy who can fight through traffic and make some plays. So I think his role might be evolving. I definitely think you should expect an increase in points from him. I thought he played better than his points would indicate last season, quite frankly. Hedl got a lot of the pub because, you know, he had that breakout with over 20 goals. But Kako, to me, was almost or just as consistent throughout the course of the season. And so I definitely see him taking a step forward. But again, I think that role is evolving and they're starting to put a little more on his plate in all situations, which also includes PK, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as a Mets, and I know you're a Jets fan as well, as a Mets and Jets fan, I've become very sensitive to preseason and early season injuries. Obviously, Zibanejad will be playing tonight. Do you have any update on on Panarin or Heedle? Yeah, so Zabanajad's all good. I talked to him today. He said it was just precautionary and, and he's fine. Panarin, it seems the same way. I didn't get a chance to talk to him, but he skated as a full participant in practice. He didn't have that red no contact jersey on. He was a full go today. So seeing him come back after only one day off during training camp should tell you that he's fine. Hedl is the one where I guess there's a little bit more concern, but even with that, it does not sound super serious. Laviolette said today they're going to give him a few days off. It doesn't sound like he'll be back at practice tomorrow or maybe for the next few days, Laviolette said. But he also made it sound like that's more just precautionary because they're in training camp. They want to play it very safe, which I think is is the smart move in this situation. And it sounds like they do expect him to be back. And there is a chance that he'll appear at least in one of those final preseason games next week. So it does not sound serious with him. I think Hedl is probably the most severe of those three. But with Zabanajan and Panarin, I think they were just very minor nicks, bruises, things like that. With Hedl, they're going to play it a little bit safer and give him a little bit more time off. But it certainly doesn't sound long term.